Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. I've got almost every single car that Matchbox put out between 1953 and 1969. Didn't rob a toy store, did you? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> so where'd you get all this? I've been collecting since I was young, actually. There's roughly a thousand pieces, almost 600 of them in boxes. Matchbox is a huge company. I mean, there's a huge collector market out there for them. So what do you want to do with these? I'm hoping to pawn them. Okay, uh, how much were you looking to get? I'm hoping to get $20,000. $20,000, okay. Today, we'll show you Pawn Stars. Rick Harrison hits the jackpot. This is an antique coffee grinder. My uncle works at the Department of Sanitation. He picks up a lot of stuff, and about five years ago, he gave this to me as a graduation gift, actually. God, he didn't like you that much, did he? <laughs> <laughs> During the second half of the 19th century, Chicago was a world leader in manufacturing anything made out of steel or cast iron. And that lasted all the way up till the 1970s. The big question is, what do you want for it? Well, um, I, I'm thinking like $500, man. Nah, 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 nah. Some people buy it like it sitting out in their front yard like this. But if you're gonna put it in your kitchen, man, or you're gonna put it in somewhere nice, it's gotta look nice. Sharps Coffee Grinder Carbine. This particular gun has an interesting feature a coffee grinder. I have an old Civil War rifle with the coffee grinder built into the buttstock. Um, really? Which I'm assuming grinds fairy dust because these things don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know. I don't know what people were thinking back during the Civil War, but I will say this is kind of crazy. Who needs to grind coffee in the middle of a shootout? Well, you never know. The story is with this gun, I believe it was a colonel, came up with the idea that one person in every company should have this in the stock of his gun, and that way you grind corn, you grind wheat. It was the Civil War. A lot of times these guys were fending for themselves for food. You come across a silo, you grab some grain, you can grind this down and you can make yourself some bread. It's real common back then. When you made your bread, you kept a little piece of dough, you wrapped a piece of cloth, threw it in your backpack, and then the next day, you took that piece of dough and you put it in your next batch of dough and took a little piece off. You keep the yeast that way and that's how you make sourdough bread. Yeah. Rick only knew about one and only one gun of this kind, and it's in a museum. And the rifle's pretty simple itself. You know, you've heard the term sharpshooter? Yeah. Came from this rifle. Okay. You were a sharpshooter if you shot a sharps. And where did you get this? I inherited it from my grandfather. Okay, because you know there's a million pictures of the one in a museum. One has never been on the market for sale. Never, ever, ever. Well, here it is. As far as I know, there's only one of these carbines that actually exists, and it's in the Springfield Armory Museum back east. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about maybe calling up the museum back east and see if it's still in the showcase. <laughs> so does that mean this is a fake? Let's hear the expert out. I'll be damned. This gun is actually worth up to $70,000. He might now wish that he gave the guy the $10,000 that he asked for. How much do you want for it? I, I think um, I'd like 10000 for it. Let me have someone look at it. I mean, it, it's really neat for a Civil War carbine, okay? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah, they're pretty much all fake, so I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This gun is a known gun. The mill is completely correct and built from original parts during the Civil War, but it was put together in the 1920s. Okay. And it's documented. It's basically been off the radar since the 1920s. Okay. So what's it worth? There's not a precedent. This is a known missing gun. So what, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars? 50 thousand. I like that price. I am just shocked that this thing actually makes fairy dust. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Um, but I'm glad to hear that Rick decided to gamble and buy this thing for no less than $35,000. Don't we write the check for 10 grand? I, uh, <laughs> you're a funny guy. Uh, we heard the expert. It's worth 50,000. I could probably come down to 40. I'll give you 30. I'm taking a pig and a poke here. I mean, I we have this incredible gun, but no one hasn't been to auction. How about 35? I live in Vegas and I don't normally do this, but I'll take a gamble. All right, thank hey, you. Hey, we got a deal, man. Pepper box pistol. Speaking of crazy looking weapons, how about we take a look at this beautiful pepper box pistol? I would love to have the money and the time to be around buying crazy guns like this. This is probably from the 1800s. What in the world are you doing here? I come to see you. You're in Florida now. I stay here part time, so. And what is this? I believe it's an 1800s 40 caliber pepper box. Not sure. Where did you get it? An estate sale. Okay, so you basically know nothing about it. No, you gotta kill time when you're retired, you know? So buy stuff you don't need. 
<laughs> will the age and the looks be enough to make this valuable? Only the expert will say. How much you want for it? Well, I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for it, but I feel it's worth $1,800. Okay, that might be a fair price, but I have no clue. Yeah. So let me go grab Alex. I think he's out in the parking lot. Okay. And um, he'll know 100 times more than I do. Yeah, I'll be here. Just yeah. the way it's put Beautiful. together, there's engraving down here. This is a nice, almost fire blued trigger guard, and you can see it's beautifully engraved. Uh, Richardson and Company. Interestingly, in the last like five years, these have gotten super popular on the collector's market. These are commanding much higher prices. That's good news for me, Rick. Because it's it's a cool looking gun, right? Very I mean, this is, this is something you pick up and people go, what is that? Yeah. No, it's a pepper box. So what do you think it's worth? Well, the broken pepper box is extremely hard to fix. Once it breaks, unless you manufacture that part or have that part, you're not fixing it. So if everything works right, what is it worth? Can I answer that if we go to the range and shoot it? Sounds like fun to me. I need a little time to inspect it. And if it looks good, I'll give you a call and you meet us. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. As per usual, these guns are worth a whole lot more if they actually shoot, so let's see how this does in the range. So since this is a 200-year-old English revolving pepper box pistol, I figured some pine glasses with good old English lager in it would be a good target. That's kind of like wasting beer, isn't it? Or apple juice. <laughs> okay. So I was out here earlier, inspected the bore, all the mechanics of it. I snapped some percussion caps, and everything worked well, so I'm comfortable to fire it. Okay. Let's see if it fires, then we'll talk about what it's worth. Sounds good. Yeah. Now you got it. <laughs> How about that? It shot amazingly, and it's worth like $3,000. I guess the $1,800 the seller was asking for turns out to be a sweet deal. So what do you think it's worth? So it's a really, really nice example of a pepper box, and it's English, it's a large caliber, it's still got its silver plating. I think you could get $3,000 for it. Okay. All right. So we got a deal at $1,800? All right, I'll give you the $1,800 as long as you buy lunch. All right. Fair sweet deal. deal. So you can tell me now, what'd you buy for at the estate sale? A little over 500. <laughs> <laughs> Antique coffee grinder. This just keeps getting weird. We were just talking about a built-in coffee grinder and a gun, and now an actual coffee grinder? What a crazy world. So what do we got here, man? This is an antique coffee grinder. My uncle works at the Department of Sanitation. He picks up a lot of stuff, and about five years ago, he gave this to me as a graduation gift, actually. God, he didn't like you that much, did he? <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw this thing, I thought, there's no way Rick will even make an offer for this. It's just old, but not valuable. Or so I thought. Rick surprised me and bought it for $200. During the second half of the 19th century, Chicago was a world leader in manufacturing anything made out of steel or cast iron. And that lasted all the way up till the 1970s. The big question is, what do you want for it? Well, um, I, I'm thinking like $500, man. Nah, 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 nah. Some people buy it like it sitting out in their front yard like this. But if you're going to put it in your kitchen, man, or you're going to put it in somewhere nice, it's got to look nice. We'll clean it up a little bit. <laughs> there you go. It's going to take a lot more than spit. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you 200 bucks for it. That's a quality piece, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to spend three or four hundred bucks to get it powder coated and make it look nice. That's a drop in a bucket for what you'll get for it, man. But, you know, there's a limit to what uh, I can pay for something. So, 200 bucks. Deal. <laughs> Rick decided to take it to the only man who could bring it back to life, and bada bing, bada boom, it sure looks great now. So, what do you think? <laughs> How's it going, man? Good, how are you, Rick? Damn, it looks great. So tell me everything you did. Well, we had to take the wheels off and, and open the gears up, but there's not too many moving parts. You know, it's just, it's basically just a paint job on the thing. I mean, it looks great. There was no problems, there was no... No major problems. It was a lot of little tedious sandblasting. It probably had 30 coats of paint on it. You know, it okay. had a lot of house paint on it. The inside was full of, uh, you know, just from dust and laying around. And little the bugs and stuff like that. Yeah, little bugs. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. I, I absolutely love it. This thing will sell quick. Are we sure this is the same coffee grinder? Guess what? This is now worth $2,500. That's what you want to hear. This is amazing. It doesn't even look like the same grinder. Rick Dale is the best. I swear he could turn dog into gold. Back when this was uh, manufactured, it sold for $17 to $18. Wow. You don't see anything like this anymore. They definitely made stuff right. It lasts a long time. Here it is today, 135 years later, and it still works. 
So what's the bill? What do I owe you? It's gonna run you 350. Okay. But how much you pay for it? I gave the guy 200 bucks for it because I just didn't know. <laughs> That's a great deal because right now you can probably get yourself between 18 and 2500 for it. Sweet. <laughs> Texas Stadium seat. This next item is a true piece of sports history. It's an authentic Texas Stadium seat, autographed by Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, the playmaker, and Troy Aikman. Where else could you find this? What do we got here? Hello, it's an authentic Texas Stadium seat from the old stadium, autographed by Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin, the playmaker, and Troy Aikman. Oh, the triplets. Yes, sir. And this one right here, this is a picture of the um, NFC Championship game? That's correct, 1992. This is Joe Montana and Emmett Smith, both signed also. You know all those guys, Rick? Yes, I watched football back in the day. All right. Emmitt Smith, he's like one of the greatest running backs of all time. He still holds the all-time rushing record, and it'll probably never get beat because this was a time when one running back would carry the ball for the majority of the game. In 93, 94, and 96, the Cowboys won three Super Bowls because these three were unstoppable. This is immediately catching both Rick and Chum's attention. I can smell a deal coming up. Rick decided to gamble on this item and paid no less than $1,922. How much do you want for these, total, for the two pieces? Both, both total, I'd love to have 3,000 total. Okay. Take 1,200 for the pair? No. <laughs> I think you could. No, I, I, I can't, just because Emmett Smith's autograph cost me about $220 for each of those signatures. I mean, what would be your best price at all of them? Best price, what if we did 2,000? What if we didn't do 2,000? Well, I guess I'd be walking back to the parking lot, <laughs> but it would have been a pleasure to meet you guys. What about 1800? What do you think about that? I'll do you a favor. Let's go 1922 for Emma Smith. All right, 1922. Sounds yes, like a sir. deal. Thank you. That seems appropriate, don't you think? Of course, Rick wasn't going to sit around and just wait for it to pay off. He actually had Emmett Smith himself to authenticate his own signature. You got to love this. These actually turned out to be the real deal. Emmett, Emmett Smith? Oh my. No, what's happening, you didn't brother? tell me Emmett Smith was coming. Chum, how you doing, brother? I mean, even better now that you're coming to authenticate your own signature. Well, I'm glad you asked me to come along now. So what you guys have here? So the seat back, I mean, it's got the Prova sticker on the front. Yeah. So I know that's legit. I know that's your signature. And I'm 99% sure this is your signature right here, but like, there's no paperwork with your signature, Correct. no sticker, nothing. Well, this picture is one of my fondest memories of the NFC Championship game, the very first one, 92-93 season. We're playing the 49ers out there in Candlestick Park, and we win this game to go to our very first Super Bowl and uh, go on to beat the Bills. So that is a special picture. But now, my signature has evolved over the years, and this is what I ended up coming up with. You got the Emmett and the J and the Smith there, and then you have the double deuces. Now, this is supposed to be a little star in the middle, and every now and then that star is not quite there, but it's, it's there. And so, when I look at the signature, the signature looks fine to me, like a, a legit Emmett Smith signature. Winston Churchill letter. A seller comes into the shop to find out if his Winston Churchill signature is real. Hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing today? What do we got? I've got a letter. Okay. And I think that this signature is Winston Churchill. Okay. We will never surrender. It's Winston Churchill quote. There's no doubt there is a lot of history in this letter and it looks made on a typewriter, but is it legit? If it is, there's no doubt in Rick's mind that he'll be able to sell this with no problem, but they might need to bring somebody down to check it out. All right, it's definitely done with the typewriter. It's not done with the computer. You can tell that by the spacing of the letters. Earlier typewriters, there was just one space for each letter. Modern computers, what happens is, is they will space them proportionately to the letter size. A good example is right where it says addition right there. Mm -hmm. See small gaps in between the Ds, a large gap in between the I, that's not proportioned. Uh, this would be really great if it's real. I really love the guy. I'm always on the lookout for anything from famous World War II leaders. And if this document is legit, I'll have no problem selling it to a collector. But I have to be sure. Let me get the thing looked at by somebody who does know, and then we'll talk money. Sure. All right? Sure. I'll give you a call. I think the letter looks real. I'm looking forward to having an expert take a look at it. Well, the expert inspected it, and this is the real thing. The expression on the seller's face is just priceless. 
You know, I would make that face too if my letter was worth $1,500. Rick, what are your uh, concerns regarding this uh, letter? Is it real? Okay, that's a very good concern. <laughs> What's it worth? Well, this letter is really cool. The uh, watermark in the paper is a uh, high quality British paper. It appears to be on Winston Churchill's personal stationery. So, do you think it's real? Well, I'll take a little closer look at the uh, uh, signature. It's a nice flowing signature. There's no real hesitation. It's not auto pen. So, it looks like you have a real autograph signature here. Good man. Nice letter. Okay, question two. What do you think that, that would go for? I think this letter would easily bring him $1,500 to $2,000, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Because of the uh, content. Thanks a lot, Dana. I really appreciate it. They had no trouble sealing the deal for $800. So how much do you want for it? Well, he said 1500 right? He said 1500 to 2000 which means in an auction it could go from on a really, really bad day, 1000 bucks, on a really, really good day, 2500 bucks. So I'm thinking $700 is a fair price, or you can take all the risk and maybe get paid a year from now. Okay, uh, how about $900? Um, I'll meet you in the middle. So you're talking 800 bucks? 800 bucks, cash, you get paid. Okay, 800 all right, it's a deal. Matchbox Toys. This time, I know everybody at the store, even the expert, didn't want the customer to pick up his stuff from Pawn. He's got almost every single car that Matchbox put out between 1953 and 1969. That's a huge collection. This man hoped to get $20,000 as a loan. Is it worth it? Let's see. All right, what do we got here? I've got almost every single car that Matchbox put out between 1953 and 1969. You didn't rob a toy store, did you? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> so where'd you get all this? I've been collecting since I was young, actually. There's roughly a thousand pieces, almost 600 of them in boxes. Matchbox is a huge company. I mean, there's a huge collector market out there for them. Everything is pre-70, which is considered the most collectible because in 70, Matchbox changed their whole way of manufacturing due to Hot Wheels being released. Most Matchbox cars are scaled down versions of actual vehicles. Kids went crazy for them, but then Hot Wheels came out with wilder hot rod type cars. So to keep up, Matchbox completely transformed their line. Now the cars from the 50s and 60s can be worth some serious money. So what do you want to do with these? I'm hoping to pawn them. Okay, uh, how much were you looking to get? I'm hoping to get $20,000. $20,000, okay. I don't know enough about this stuff to just shell out 20 grand. Right. But my buddy Johnny will now. So let me get him down here, have him go through all these boxes, and maybe we'll get something done. The experts sure determined this deal actually makes sense, and all this stuff is worth up to $75,000. You got the coronation coach. They've made two to 300 of these pieces when they coronated uh, Queen Elizabeth. This is a really, really rare piece. I've seen these go for $1,200 to $1,500. If you got the BP tanker with the gray wheels, that's a $1,000 piece right there. Also, if you got some of the king size pieces here, these can go $300 a piece. You have some jewels in these boxes here. This collection is amazing. I mean, boxes, condition, rarity, it has all the factors going for it. So what are your questions about this collection? What's it all worth? Everything's pretty mint. It's a pretty complete collection. I would put a price in the collection at 25 to 28 grand on the whole collection. Uh, I'd have to uh, disagree with that. All right, what do you think it's worth? I put it at 75,000 myself. Okay, I mean, that's like top end retail. I would say about 10 years ago, at the peak of the market, you would have probably been closer to that number. I would say probably 28 grand on today's value. Thanks, Johnny. You're the best. Appreciate it, buddy. No problem, man. They explained the rules, and he was able to get the $20,000 he was looking for in the first place. Do you think he'll be back to pick them up? You're looking for a $20,000 loan. I've got no problem giving it to you. Mm -hmm. 20 grand is a big loan. With loans like this, you gotta make sure you're crystal clear and completely fair. Even if that means dishing out advice. The last thing you want is some guy claiming you weren't up front. You gotta understand, man, my typical loan is 100 bucks. I strongly suggest you do not take a $20,000 loan. Think of a number that you absolutely need, because you got to pay me back, man. And believe it or not, the more money I loan you, the more money I make. Right. right. It's a 120 day loan. You don't pick it up, the stuff's mine. Fair enough. So, what do you want to do? I need the 20. It's uh, not what I want, it's what I need. All right, write them up, son. All right, man, deal. Thank you.
G.I. Joe Nurse Action Doll. This next item is a very small but very unique action figure. An original G.I. Joe Nurse Action Doll. I didn't even know these existed, but it's from 1967 and it's in such great condition considering the age. I have a doll here that's uh, a G.I. Joe, actually. It's from 1967. G.I. Oh, yeah, Joe wasn't a girl. Well, it's this one. G.I. Jane. Oh, you know a lot about <laughs> dolls, buddy. Actually, I've never seen one of these before. They're very rare. She's the only female G.I. Joe doll that was ever made. I don't imagine they sold very many of them. No, not too many. Boys didn't want a nurse doll. Yeah, that wouldn't have been big back then. Um, where did you get it? An estate sale. Okay. G.I. Joe action figures were huge in the 60s and the 70s. Just about every boy had at least one. But I somehow doubt very many had the G.I. Joe nurse. So this could be extremely valuable. It's supposed to be worth a pile of money. Let's see what this customer can get for it. The expert came down to check this out in no time. And this is actually legit. Right, and what do you want to do with it? Well, I think I want to sell it. Okay, and how much did you want for it? I'd like about 2500 for the dollar. You know, this is the thing. I don't know enough about this thing. To tell you the truth, I don't even know if it's fake, but I have a buddy who does. He knows everything about these. So if you don't mind, I, let me call him up. His shop is just down the street. I'm sure he'll run right down here for this thing. One of the most sought after collectibles on the market today. This doll right here came out with a green medic bag and a white medic bag. The white medic bag is the rare of the two, which makes this one here more valuable. The white bag alone could probably fetch anywhere from 250 to $500. This doll right now as it sits, we're looking anywhere from twelve to fifteen hundred dollars in today's market. That's all. Yes. Even with this white bag. Even with the white bag. You sure? There's some dolls that with the bag went up for auction for five or six thousand dollars, but that was in the box. You got a loose figure here. It would be worth about five to six thousand dollars if it was in the package. This doll was loose. It was missing some of the accessories, but it was in good condition, so it's still worth about fifteen hundred dollars as it is. The price of things go up and down, and condition is everything. I mean, it's in pretty good shape, but there's no box. There's holes in her stockings. This is dirty. Yeah, it's not really what I wanted to hear, but uh, I can understand it. I'm sure any G.I. Joe collectors would want this. I think it's very surprising how this doll was a complete failure back in the day, and is such a must in a G.I. Joe collection. Rick ended up making a deal for no less than $800. I know you're disappointed. Now that you have the info, what do you want to get out of it? Well, I'd, I'd like to get at least a thousand. I'll give you 600 bucks for it. Mm, no, how about nine? Yeah, you gotta um, be kidding me with six, I mean. I'm just thinking it's gonna be a nightmare to sell. There are a lot of G.I. Joe collectors out there, and this is- I know, rare. but it's, you know, that's the only thing I'm thinking in my head. There's a lot of G.I. Joe collectors out there. It's G.I. Joe nurse. But G.I. Joe collectors don't have this in their collection, so they uh, would I'll, be- I'll go seven on it. How about eight? Um. I'll give you the eight port. All oh, right. All right. Thanks. Go right her up. Ball and chain. What you're about to see is something I never would have expected to have any value, much less seeing Rick make an offer. This is literally a ball and chain. This was kind of the smartphone of the past. Earlier today, a guy called, said he's got a ball and chain. And since I'm not an expert in that field, I called my buddy Mark, who is. So this is the ball and chain you called me about. Yep. I'm an expert in police memorabilia and restraints. I've been collecting police memorabilia for about 25 years now. So why do you want to get rid of it? Well, actually, I just got married uh, a couple weeks ago, and I don't need it anymore. I got the real thing at home. <laughs> Rick knows nothing of this topic, and I don't either. Let's hear it from an expert. So, Mark, what do you think? Well, this was pretty much used by the prison system. So ball and chains are found mainly in the United States, typically in the South, where the chain gangs were prevalent. They'd attach it to their prisoners so they could let the prisoner get outside of the prison yard to do farming or road work or didn't want to take the chance of them escaping. This was good behavior? <laughs> this thing is wild. I can just imagine those poor guys on the side of the road wearing their striped uniforms, dragging around a pickaxe, and this thing on their leg, it must have been hell. Well, I'm surprised this is the real deal because a lot of them are fake. Plus, each one of these pieces was actually hand forged. This could be worth up to $750, and it certainly is a very interesting item. In identifying a fake one, the first thing you want to look at is the chain. 
The chain will be modern, welded. Okay. 99% of all ball and chains that you'll see are faked. There's very few examples that have existed, and most of them are in private collections. This one has the old heat and beat method. Links were probably very hot and hammered into the shape and then hammered shut. This thing is incredible. There's 40 or 50 links in this chain and every single one of them was hand forged. Nowadays, you just walk into the hardware store, give me three feet of that. <laughs> so I can tell that this is an authentic piece. I'm gonna date it somewhere between 1920 and 1940. It was manufactured by a company called Tower, which was the Ford of handcuffs and leg irons. So how much is it worth? I'd estimate somewhere between $650 and $750. Okay. Rick decided to make an offer and buy it for $400. This guy definitely left with a smile on his face after this deal. You know what, I'm gonna make this real plain and easy and simple and 400 bucks and not a dime more. 450? 400 bucks. How often do I have someone walking in here asking for a ball and chain? Not real often. All right, 400 bucks it is. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment and hit that like and subscribe button too. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video to your family and friends. See you soon.